Today I'm going to go over how I created this Tyler the Creator 3D animation with custom golf of floor clothing that I designed. To create animations or visualizers like these, I use the following softwares and add-ons. The first part of this video is going to be creating the character. And if you've already watched my Easy Shades video, then you should already be familiar with this process. So on Google, I first searched for a front and side photo of Tyler the Creator and saved them into my project folder. Then in FaceGen, I upload the photos. FaceGen then prompts me to mark different points on both photos, which FaceGen uses as guidelines for creating the morph and textures. Once all the marking is complete, I check both options and click the Create from Photos button. Then I let FaceGen do its magic. After a little waiting, Faishan has my morph ready. This whole process is very photo dependent, so if it doesn't look good the first time, I always try again with different photos. In the export menu, I gave my morph and textures a parameter name. This is the name of what it will be referred to in DAS. I also make sure that Genesis 8 model is selected. Then I click export. This saves my morph and textures in my DAS directory. Now in DAS Studio, I load in a Genesis 8 model into my scene. Now I need to add my face morph to this character. To do this, I go into the shaping tab and I look for the parameter name I saved my face morph as. Then by simply adjusting the slider, I can change the character face into my face morph. Now, we still need to add in the textures. To do this, I go into the surfaces tab. Then I add in the corresponding texture maps for each surface by changing the base color. Once I have all my texture maps added, I can make adjustments to the body shape to add that extra level of detail. Then I save the scene. Now to import my model into Blender, I use the Diffeomorphic plugin. This plugin results in much better textures than the standard DAS to Blender bridge. There's an amazing tutorial by Lucid Man Studio that shows you how to quickly set it up. So using the Diffeomorphic plugin, I then export the model and I make sure it has the same name as a saved file. Now jumping into Blender, I first import my model using the DAS importer add-on, which is part of the Diffeomorphic plugin. Then I use another plugin called RigGNS. This plugin is super useful for adding animations to your characters. We can use it to directly add Mixamo animations in Blender. So to be able to add animations through RigGNS, I first need to convert my DAS rig to a meta rig. This is done by going through the steps in the rig figure dropdown. Once the meta rig is added, I check to make sure everything is rigged properly. The next step is to add hair. The simplest way I've found to do this is by selecting half the faces for the scale and duplicating them. Then I make them into a separate object. Then with the scalp object selected, I add a mirror modifier and select my base model as the mirror object. I also add a shrink wrap modifier and choose my base model as the target. This wraps my scalp mesh to the model so it always sticks to it. I turn on proportional editing and start moving the vertices to create the hairline. I also make sure to look at reference images because this part can be a little tricky. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I apply the mirror modifier and then I'm ready to start adding the hair. So in the particle tab, I add a new particle system and select hair. Now, the rest of this process depends on how I want the hair to look. There are a ton of great tutorials that show you how to create realistic looking hair in Blender, and I highly recommend you check those out. I will link some in the description below. To get more control over the hairstyle, I also edit the hair in the particle edit menu. I use the different brushes to move, shorn, and lengthen the hair particles to get the look I'm going for. Once again, I use multiple reference images. Then it was time to add the animation. Now to add animations, I like to use this amazing software called Mixamo. It has a bunch of free animations you can add to your character. For my project, I wanted an idle animation where the main focus would be on the clothing. And then I came across this one where the character is holding a suitcase. This gave me the idea to add the Lafleur suitcase into the final animation, which I had already modeled for a previous project. I make a few edits to the animation and then I export it using the download button. In the export settings, I make sure to export without the skin. Now, as I mentioned before, the RigGNS add-on allows us to easily add Mixamo animations to our model. By clicking the Mixamo importer button, I import the animation I had saved from Mixamo and bind it to my character. I check to make sure the animation runs smoothly. Then I bake the animation to my character. Once it's baked, I go into the pose mode and move the animation by 25 frames. Then I clear the location and rotation of all the bones at the start of the animation so I get the character back in A pose. Doing this will make my life much easier when I want to add and simulate the clothing. Then I exported the model with the animation as an Olympic file, which I'll use to simulate the clothing in Marvelous Designer. Now the next step is to add in the shoes. Since the floor tends to have a classier feel, I decided the best shoes for the outfit would be a pair of loafers. And to add some variety to the outfits, I also added a pair of sneakers. Luckily, I was able to find a nice pair of loafers and sneakers online for free. So to add the shoes to my model, I first import them into the scene. I like to work with one shoe at a time, so I delete the other shoe. Then I try to fit the shoe roughly on the character. Once that is done, I parent the shoe to the rig, and it gives me an error. 
fail to find solution for one or more bones. If you work with blender rigs, you've probably come across this error numerous times. This is usually due to messy or unclean geometry. Now, there are a couple of workarounds for this, but I wanted to find the best solution. And I came across a solution by Issa that solved the problem really well. So I first undo the parenting, then I add a cube into the scene and make it roughly the same size as the shoe. Then I add a subdivision surface modifier and a shrink wrap modifier. At this point, the cube roughly has the same shape as the shoe. Then I apply both modifiers and parent the cube to the rig. This should work without any issues since our cube has cleaner geometry. Once the cube is rigged, the next step is to transfer the weights from the cube to the shoe. To do this, I first select the shoe and then the cube and go into weight painting mode. Then going into the weight dropdown, I select transfer weights. Here I want to make sure that by name option is selected. Now if I parent the shoe to the rig and select with empty groups, it should finally work. Now to add in the second shoe, I use a mirror modifier and move it above the armature modifier. Doing this, the second shoe should automatically go into place. To fix the clipping issue, I select the character and go into scalp mode. Then with the smooth brush selected, I start to smooth out the surfaces that stick out of the shoes. And finally, add a new material for the shoes. Then it was time to add the suitcase. Once again, just rigging it directly will give me the same error as before. So I use the same method of adding a cube and then parenting that to the character instead. Now if I play the animation, the suitcase will rotate and deform. The rotation issue is caused because the finger bones have influence on the suitcase. We only want the suitcase to move based on the movement of the right hand bone and not the finger bones. To fix this, I go into the vertex groups menu and delete all the vertex groups except for the one for the right hand. This will delete all the other influences from other bones of the rig. Now if I play the animation, the suitcase will move as a rigid body without any deformation. And then once again, I transfer the weights from the cube to the actual suitcase. Lastly, I tweak the position of the suitcase one last time till it fits well with the rest of the animation. Now I create the rest of the scene by adding in a plane, which I shape into the typical studio backdrop. For the background, I decided to go with the blue color to match the color of the golf floor store. And then I also added a camera to the scene and positioned it where I wanted. Now at this point I had my whole scene set up and the only thing left was to design the clothing pieces. When designing the clothing, I first studied all the already existing pieces of golf Fleur to try to get an idea of the type of designs that would fit well into their collection. Their color palette mainly consists of earth tones and pastels, and they tend to use very minimal design elements, mainly sticking to their flower logo and the brand name. Another place that is great to get ideas from is Pinterest, so I created my own board and pinned all the different designs that I liked. Once I was ready, I hopped into Marvelous Designer and started creating. Now, if you're new to Marvelous Designer, I would highly recommend checking out Very Vague's three-part tutorial that covers much of what you need to know to get started in Marvelous. The first outfit I decided to create was a brown leather jacket with a pair of brown trousers. Creating the trousers was pretty simple. I added the pants template from Marvelous Designer and made small edits to the pattern in the 2D pattern window. Then I added a waistband and created back pockets for the pants. Finally, I changed the color of the fabric to a dark brown that I liked, and that was it for the trousers. I also quickly added a black t-shirt that would go underneath the leather jacket. Once again, I used the already existing t-shirt template. To create the leather jacket, I started with a template of the pre-made padded jacket that comes with Marvelous Designer. I started off by deleting the top layer and all the internal lines. Then I set the pressure value to zero to loosen the fabric to its original state. With this basic jacket, I then started to edit the patterns. I added a zipper using the zipper tool. I added cuffs to the sleeves using internal lines. And I added a collar, which I pinned down using the pin tool. Then in the fabrics folder, I searched for a leather material and added a lamb leather material to my jacket. I changed the color to brown and also played around with the reflection intensity and roughness value till I got the look I wanted. I also changed the thickness of the fabric to four millimeters. Then it was time to add in the flower patches. To do this, I first added the flower logo as a texture on the jacket. Then with the internal line tool, I started outlining the shape of the logo. This tool is very similar to any pen tool that you use in a typical graphic design software. Once I had the internal line shape completed, I deleted the graphic and then started copying and pasting the logo shape all over the jacket. Then with all the internal shapes selected, I used the cut and sew option. Now to make the shapes thicker, I selected all the shapes and then created a layer clone of them. And finally, I created another material for the patches and changed the color to a slightly lighter brown. And the leather jacket was complete. I also made sure to fix all the UVs for all the pieces so they were in a one by one square. Then I imported in the Olympic file of the animation and simulated the clothing. The next outfit I designed was a quarter zip pullover with matching shorts. 
I found a free pair of shorts online and imported them into my project. Once again, I used the padded jacket as a starting template and used it to create my pullover. In the fabrics folder, I searched for a Sherpa material and then added it to both my garments. In the fabrics property, I changed the color and thickness of the fabric. For the pullover, I wanted to add a brand name logo to the front, so I designed a quick logo on Illustrator and then imported it into Marvelous Designer. Using the same process as before, I used the internal line tool and created the outline for the logo, which I placed on the pullover and the shorts. Once I was done with the outfit, I fixed the UVs and then simulated it. I followed a similar process for the last two outfits. One was a green Sherpa jacket with a pair of cargo pants, and the other was a sweater vest with a pair of beige trousers. Then in Blender, once I imported each outfit, I also added a pair of sunglasses and changed the color of the suitcase for each outfit. Then I rendered each animation separately for each outfit. And that is it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've attached some of the project files for this project in the description below. Finally, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.